Welcome to this video on Staphylococcus aureus. In this video, we'll talk about some of the virulence factors of Staph aureus. So, Staph aureus is a gram-positive organism, and it, when it divides, it forms clusters of spherical cells. There are different strains but many of them are golden in color and that's actually how staph gets its name. It's called the golden staph and literally its na name means clusters of spheres. If only all bacteria were named so logically, right? So clusters of spheres that are golden in color. Gram positive organism it's found um, normally in many of our nasal passages. So I read different things about this, but sometimes um, an estimate is that about 20% of people carry Staph aureus as a normal part of their flora, so it doesn't make them sick. It's just um, taking up residence there. So it lives in the nasal passages. and also can live on the skin. What helps it do that is that it's salt tolerant. So unlike streptococcus, so if someone gets a strep, strep throat or other strep infection, strep is not salt tolerant, but staph is, and so it can live on the sweaty skin. So you can take a nasal swab and um, grow it that way. So remember I was saying that Staphylococcus aureus is the golden staph? Well, it's also considered, well, I guess this is just me calling it this, the golden child of human pathogens. So here I have a close-up of three Staph aureus cells, and I'm going to use this to show you the virulence factors, so why and how Staph can cause the diseases that it does. All right, um, MRSA is a well-known strain of Staph, Staph aureus. And when I say strain, I'm not talking about a different species. It's um, still Staph aureus, but within any species of bacteria, there can sometimes be hundreds of strains. And this particular strain is resistant to an antibiotic known as methicillin, which isn't used clinically very much, but that's how they can diagnose it when they grow it on a lab plate. And it's not necessarily more virulent, but it's just more resistant to antibiotics. So it's not like it makes worse toxins than other kinds of Staph aureus. It's just that we are unable to inhibit its growth as well as we can other Staph aureus. Okay, so now get a green pen, and we will start with one of the most famous um, Sorry, one of the most famous virulence factors, which is coagulase. I'm going to make a green arrow up to these boils or pimples on this person's nose. And then right along that, write coagulase. Coagulase can sometimes be attached to the bacterial cell and cause its effects that way. Or other times it can be free. In, um, actually float around in our blood, our bloodstream if it's released from the bacteria. So we can have free or bound coagulase. If you take a microbiology class, then there are different tests that you can do in lab to discern whether the coagulase you're testing for is free or bound. So it's that coagulase is what I'm going to give the bulk of the credit to for the characteristic infection of um, pimples and boils and impetigo. So pimples, boils, and impetigo.
because the coagulase helps the bacteria to wall itself off from our immune system. We can put that right here. So it helps wall off from our immune system because it forms little clots with, of our fibrin. So it makes our plasma clot. Okay, the next um, virulence factor we'll talk about is um, an enterotoxin. So you may or may not have been aware that Staph aureus is going to, can you tell what that might do? Food poisoning, right? It actually makes an enterotoxin. So that's the second virulence factor we'll put on here. So it makes coagulase and it makes an enterotoxin. This enterotoxin, though, um, can cause some nasty uh, vomiting and diarrhea, so foodborne illness. And it happens if this toxin is on the food that you eat. So a hand, if a food handler has uh, maybe Staph aureus in their nose, maybe they rub their nose, they get some of this toxin onto their hands, and then it can end up on your food. And unfortunately, this is known also as a super antigen. You may uh, remember hearing about super antigens uh, in class, and what super antigens are able to do is start a cytokine storm. So if this gets in the bloodstream, let's say it damages the intestinal walls badly enough that the toxin is able to get into the bloodstream, it could trigger a cytokine storm. And that could lead to septic shock because a cytokine storm can lead to massive inflammation. So get your red pen again. This can cause vomiting and diarrhea. So, and then let's put a few of these toxins right here. This is also the toxin that was associated, let's see, where can I put this? Um, I'm kind of running out of room. This was associated with uh, toxic shock syndrome in the 80s when it got onto some tampons. And they've now changed the way they make the, the tampon, and so I guess that Staph aureus is not as able to grow on tampons as it was, although they still have the warning label, label on there. So they call it toxic shock syndrome, TSS. And that warning label is on every box of tampons stole in the, sold in the US. Sorry. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, another virulence factor, another toxin, and this one is called exfoliatin. You can um, almost tell what it's going to do just by its name. People might use exfoliators, right? Like as a beauty treatment. Well, you don't want to take this too far because if you have too much exfoliation going on, there can actually be a separation of the dermis in the skin from the epidermis. So this particular uh, toxin is associated with scalded skin syndrome. And it's particularly uh, notorious in infants, most likely because they don't have a lot of normal flora on their skin yet, and so the Staph aureus can cause this. So it's notable in infants, probably because A, they lack extensive normal flora of their own, and B, their immune system is undeveloped still. Immune system is immature. So for both of these reasons, you don't hear of this with adults the same way that you hear about it with infants. 
Okay, so um, now let's talk about another um, toxin, and this one is called hyaluronidase. You might hear in the sound of that that it sounds a little bit like hyalin, which is part of our connective tissue. And what hyalin or hyaluronidase is able to do is to break down our connective tissue. And this is one of the reasons why Staph aureus, like Strep pyogenes, is known for causing, being able to cause necrotizing fasciitis. Because whenever um, something can move quickly through our connective tissue, then that can be a concern. So this would be um, hyalin and other connective tissue. Uh, CT is connective tissue elements. So this um, hyaluronidase is able to enzymatically digest connective tissue. And because of that, may be associated with lots of spreading diseases. So um, to give you examples of that, let's um, go ahead and draw a green arrow up to the bone and then up to the heart. Because it can then spread to the bone and cause osteomyelitis or to the heart valves and cause endocarditis. So it's quick spreading can lead to osteomyelitis or endocarditis if it's in the heart valves. or if it's still on the skin, it could lead to necrotizing fasciitis. So actually, let's let, have that here, necrotizing fasciitis. So those are the three things that I most tightly associate with its hyaluronidase production. So now we'll go down to the bottom of the page again and get out your green pen because here's yet another toxin. Um, this one is an interesting protein on the surface of Staph aureus and it's called protein A. Uh, sometimes maybe A protein. And what this can do, look at this is amazing. It binds to the constant region or the tail of an antibody. And by doing that, let's say the, the antibody's trying to bind to this, it just completely takes the antibody out of commission from what it's trying to do. decreases the effectiveness of our immune system in that way because now the antibodies aren't working and it can bind to any IgG antibody so not just ones that would want to bind to MRSA or Staph aureus but any antibodies at all which is going to overall undermine the immune system. Okay then the um, next one put on here is what's called a leukocytin. It's able to damage white blood cells. And it's called PVL. It's a leukocytin. Now not all Staph aureus can make all of these different toxins. Some are characteristic like coagulase but that might also then affect how virulent the Staph aureus is. If it can make all of these, it's going to be more virulent. I can put some of this. So it destroys white blood cells. Yikes, another way that it's undermining our immune system. And then 
the last um, that I'll put on here is the beta lactamase. And I made a little B here for it. So this stands for beta lactamase, which is a characteristic enzyme that most staphs can make, staph aureuses can make. And they use it to chop up penicillin. So let's make the penicillin in orange. Chop, chop. So beta lactamase chops up or inactivates our, or sorry, not our, penicillin. And this is why most Staph aureus strains are resistant to penicillin, because it can make this enzyme. Okay, so I will zoom out. Oops. And then lower the page a little bit, and we'll do a quick recap. So the first um, toxin I talked about that it can make is number one, coagulase. And coagulase helps it hide from our immune system. It, it's able to wall itself off. Then we talked about its enterotoxin which can cause um, foodborne illness if it's on contaminated foods. It's usually like a 24-hour um, bug that people can get over pretty quickly. But in immunocompromised people, if the enterotoxin damages the intestines enough and gets into the blood, then it can trigger a cytokine storm. Um, then we talked about exfoliatin, which I see that I didn't even write that down for you, so let's write that on here. Exfoliatin. Did I not write it anywhere? Sorry exfoliatin and this um, and or this toxin is able to separate the epidermis from the dermis with the damage it can cause leading to scalded skin syndrome most common in immunocompromised babies and then hyaluronidase is the fourth one that we talked about it is famous for um, allowing staph aureus to spread quickly and eat its way through connective tissue so for that reason, I am including problems like necrotizing fasciitis, osteomyelitis, where the bone becomes infected, endocarditis, where the bacteria is able to move to heart valves, and then the fifth virulence factor or toxin that we could talk about is protein A, and protein A is a cell wall component of Staph aureus, and it binds to the constant region of antibodies. So this is an antibody, and by doing so, it decreases the effectiveness of our own immune system and basically mops up antibodies that might be circulating in the blood to help defend us, and it, so it takes them out of commission. Okay, then I talked about uh, PVL, which is a leukocytin, and this is um, going to damage our own white blood cells, again undermining our immune reaction. And then the last one, uh, number seven, is beta lactamase that Staph aureus can make, and in doing so, it chops up penicillin.